Okay, in this video we're going to prove the isosceles triangle theorem. Now, the isosceles triangle theorem just says that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. So, here we have an isosceles triangle, and in order to prove this theorem, in order to prove this statement, what we want to do is to show that angle A in this triangle is congruent to angle C. Well, the way we're going to do this is we're going to take this triangle and we're going to draw in an altitude from vertex B. So if I draw in this altitude, and remember an altitude is a segment that forms a right angle. It goes through a vertex of a triangle and forms a right angle. So I draw in this, uh, this altitude, and so I've essentially kind of split my isosceles triangle into two smaller triangles. Let me call this triangle number one and triangle number two. Well, and actually let me go ahead and let me draw these out over here a little bit smaller. Here's triangle number one. And here's triangle number two. And these are both right triangles. And I know that these two sides here, my hypotenuses of these small right triangles, these two sides here are congruent. And I also know that these legs here, they're congruent because they're both the same, this same line here. All right? So this must be congruent to this because this line here is congruent to itself. Well, since I've got a right triangle here, and it has, I have a right triangle here and a right triangle here, and these two sides on this right triangle are congruent to these two sides on this right triangle, well, the Pythagorean theorem tells me that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, since I know what b and c are on this triangle, then if I had like actual numbers, then I could solve that for this side here, a. And since these two sides on this right triangle are exactly the same as these two sides on this right triangle, well, if I were to solve that, if I were to use the Pythagorean theorem, find the length of this side, it would have to be the same length as the side on this triangle. That means these two sides here must also be congruent. Therefore, triangle number one and triangle number two are congruent triangles. Well, if triangle number one and triangle number two are congruent triangles, that means all of their corresponding parts, including their corresponding angles, must also be congruent. Therefore, this angle and this angle, that is the base angles of this isosceles triangle, must be congruent. And we just proved that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent.